Yellowstone, one of our nation's greatest treasures. Founded March 1, 1872, Yellowstone hosts some of the world's most stable and diverse ecosystems within its 3,500 square miles of pristine wilderness. But in the 1950s and 60s, Yellowstone's ecosystem began to decline, leaving scientists to wonder what could cause such rapid and catastrophic destruction in the park's ecosystem. Starting in the early 50s, scientists started noticing that the ecosystem was changing. Deer and elk herds were increasing in population, while songbird populations dwindled. Trout and other cold water fish were dying off. Young trees were not growing. Grass and plant life became sparse. Eagles and osprey were nearly extinct, and there was no sign of beaver activity along the rivers. Oddly, the coyote population exploded, and the famed grizzly bear was scarcely seen. So why was this happening? In the mid-1930s, farmers and ranchers started killing off wolves because they felt the wolves were endangering their livelihood by killing their livestock. Soon, other hunters hunted wolves for their own fortune, so large bounties were paid for each dead wolf. By the early 1940s, there were no more wolves in Yellowstone. Because the wolves were no longer available to hunt, the deer and elk populations exploded. The dense population of herbivores decimated the grass and plant life, causing all of the herbivores to seek food from the baby trees and the low foliage of the mature trees. Because of the lack of mid-level foliage, the beloved songbirds had no place to nest, forcing them to seek shelter elsewhere. Also, river water began to increase in temperature, causing some riverbeds to dry up and others to warm up to a temperature too warm to support cold water fish such as trout. When the trout became scarce, the beaver along the rivers left to find food in other rivers. The lack of beaver dams further enhanced the temperature in the rivers. With the wolf competition gone, the coyote population was left to expand. The large coyote population ate the small rodents such as voles, rabbits, and mice, leaving little food for other small carnivores such as the hawk, eagle, osprey, and badger, again forcing these creatures to migrate to other food sources. This time period in Yellowstone also saw a decrease in the Ursus arctos orobilis population, the feared and respected grizzly bear. This photo depicts the Yellowstone ecosystem before the wolf population became extinct. Notice the abundance of flora and fauna in this healthy system. This photo depicts Yellowstone decades after the wolf extinction. Notice the lack of flora and fauna. So what happened? To understand how this ecosystem decline took place, you first have to understand how an ecosystem operates. Ecosystem, a community of plants and animals that rely on each other for food and shelter. In other words, a complex food web. Food web, a series of interconnecting and interdependent food chains. Food chain, a group of organisms that provide food and nourishment for the next creature up on the chain including your producers, your consumers, your secondary consumers, decomposers, and more. With your understanding of how an ecosystem works, we can now look at the theory of the trophic cascade. Trophic refers to the different levels of life in an ecosystem. Consider a pyramid to represent the ecosystem. Wolves and other main predators would be the highest on the trophic pyramid, while plants and grass represent the lowest level. Cascade is a series of events that are the result of one initial event. Consider a water cascade to depict this. A river spills over a ledge. Water flows in several directions, bouncing off rocks and splitting into even more directions, until the width of the bottom of the waterfall is several times wider than the initial point. Trophic cascade is the effect that an apex, or top predator, wolves in this case, have on an ecosystem, and the interdependence of other species within the ecosystem. Aldo Leopold was one of the first people to figure out that apex predators control the ecosystem. In his groundbreaking work, Thinking Like a Mountain, he put forth this idea that was actually 50 years ahead of its time. The theory of trophic cascade fits in with the decline of Yellowstone starting in the 1930s. Based on this theory, scientists concluded that it was the annihilation of wolves that created the trophic cascade. They used this information to then convince the government to reinstate wolves in Yellowstone. In 1995, the government relocated 15 wolves into Yellowstone. 
A year later, 15 more wolves were added to Yellowstone. From those initial 30 wolves, the wolf population grew to over 300 wolves by 1999. Within 15 years after wolves were reintroduced into Yellowstone, the ecosystem started changing for the better. The herd populations were brought down, the songbirds came back, the rivers were flowing, the beavers were back, the trout were back, the eagles and the badgers, the osprey, they were all back. So why? What makes the wolves the apex predator? These wolves do one thing. They make animals run. The elk can't stay together and spread their disease. The elk are now healthy and strong. They run many miles in a day, and the thing that they do is when they run, they can't kill uh, the trees. So all it took was 10 years, and now the trees are over 25 feet tall. Uh, within five years, songbirds returned to 50 species of them. And now that we've got the birds back, we have the elk aerating the ground, the deer run fast, the antelope run fast, and that leaves holes in the ground so that the water's aerated. And the next thing, the ground gets aerated and you get more groundwater retention. So now that there's more groundwater retention, you have these trees putting shade on the ground, and for the first time in 50 years, the ground is cooling down, the cool water is going to the creeks, and fish are going to survive better. The second thing that we saw was that as soon as the wolves chased the elk, the willows came back. And when the willows came back, they ended up having so much food uh, for the beavers that the beavers returned. And when the beavers came back, we ended up with literally one, two, three hundred percent more life in a creek, simply because a wolf lives in the environment. Same thing works with bears and mountain lions. But sadly, we've killed so many predators that now our prey animals are just standing still and become stagnant. Science has taught us that many of our actions can affect the world around us. Just always consider the consequences of your actions, because everything in the world is connected. As John Muir said, when you try to pick out any one thing by itself, we find it hitched to everything else in the universe.